Okay, we're just booting up my Commodore PC-10-2, one of the uh, IBM XT compatibles that was released by Commodore in the 80s. Uh, what I'm going to do is not this video is not about this lots of videos out there about these computers um, Nothing too extra special about them <clears throat> We'll talk about one of the one thing that I think is a little interesting about it in the which is the video card I'm going to talk about that a little bit later but what I want to do is install this PC turbo 286 e uh, grabbed one of these recently kind of rare don't see too many of them floating around especially 100% complete in the box this is a accelerator card to take our XT to 286 speeds hopefully so complete in the box while it looks almost brand new I believe this is used but it is in really really good shape so in the box here we have a floppy disk. I would imagine the drivers and software I need to get this up and running are on here. In this package I'm going to assume this is a um, addendum stuff. Let's see what we got here. So we have the commitment to support. Product support, compatibility, yeah, updates to the user manual. So it looks like on the disk itself there's some updates. And these are warranty cards. Oh, so this card here you can use to send away to get a 8287 math chip. So there's a slot on the card itself to add the coprocessor uh, back in the day that was something extra your CPU needed if you wanted extra speeds here um, I believe my card has that so just going through this document some compatibility notes hardware warranty okay yeah. works with PC and MS DOS that's good that's good that's what we have Here's our user guide, user manual. Amazing shape, by the way. It literally looks like it's brand new. So our super high performance accelerator card. Uh, software installation instructions. So I'll go through this in some detail. Lots of detail, lots of detail in that user manual. Here is our card. Now this is a full length 8-bit ISA BOSS card. Uh, it is going to take up the entire length of the PC here for sure. So you can see my have the math coprocessor located up there in the uh, upper right corner uh, that is the option you have some reference of uh, the cost of this back in the day here's Ahoy magazine which is a Commodore publication from 1987 it's listed in here the turbo 286 for 579 so 1987 so almost a $600 upgrade to your PC in Byte magazine the year earlier. So this is May. This is a uh, PC magazine. It is listed for seven ninety nine. So you know, a fair bit cheaper, a couple hundred bucks cheaper than a year after. Here's a full page ad in Byte magazine from nineteen eighty six. Listed for eleven ninety five. So pretty expensive upgrade, uh, all things considering. I notice application support it has Windows there, so it'd be interesting to try that out. So before installing, I wanted to just get some recordings of um, just stock benchmarks here using Check It, using Check It 2.1. Uh, so here a list of currently used interrupts. 
The only one available on this list that is an option on the card is three. So I luckily I can use that. Okay, so here you can see I've got an 8080 CPU running at 4.78 megahertz. Uh, CGA compatible video adapter and my 8087 uh, co-processor. CPU speed 344 dry stones. Okay. And 115.6k weight stones on the math speed. Okay, but let's get into ins actually installing this into the PC. So, uh, just showing the manual here, while I kind of talk about installing hardware in old PCs. Uh, I mean, you kids really don't know how easy you have it today. Um, there was no such thing as plug and play back then. Uh, I know that's an old person thing to say, but hey, the reality is we had to deal with IRQ settings, interrupt requests and I.O. space and memory addresses and things like that. And every piece of hardware had to be, you know, manually set. Uh, and they couldn't conflict. You couldn't share I.O. space. You couldn't share IRQ. So the manual does go through it in, in some great detail. It's got some default settings, uh, which I've had to modify uh, to fit into my situation. I've got an XT. IDE interface so I've got a hard drive in mine um, it's actually a compact flash and the IO space conflicts with the default on the card itself let's install this into my PC here so a full length card she's gonna take up the entire uh, width of the PC so they go in pretty snugly there's guides on my PC that help it uh, sort of adhere to the front of the chassis. So, all right, so now the card's in, let's get her installed here. You've noticed I'm running MS DOS version 4.01. The forgotten version of MS DOS, I find. Okay, software install. Got three options here. So install or reinstall the PC Turbo 286. Examine or modify. Allocate host RAM. I guess option one. And before proceeding, check that you've read the following hardware installation. Oh, you bet. We've read it. We've set our jumpers. We are good to go. drive you normally boot from that'd be C drive copying files So this customizing your turbo.com. So the turbo.com I guess is the the launcher or the driver that gets run. And it's modified based on your specific situation. So this is setting up the video card that you would have installed. I do have a CGA compatible adapter in there. Okay, it's gonna run a test. So Testing for flicker-free color graphics. Watch the color adapter for screen. Did you see snow or flicker? Uh, I didn't notice, so let's run the test one more time. Did you see snow? I did not, so it looks like we're good. So Fast color will be enabled. Nice. Hercules monochrome. So I do have that function on my card, but it's disabled. 
Okay, so this is where we set up the I.O. space. So the I.O. address of the card and its interrupt. And I did change mine from the default. So my I.O. address is 310 and it's on interrupt number 3. So, does your PC have memory expansion? I believe it does. How do you want to use it? I guess e expand in memory system. Let's pick that. information okay do these look correct I believe so Okay, so what has happened here? It's just hanging every time. After a lot of troubleshooting, I found this article on the web. And this looks like it's right from Orchid that the Turbo is not compatible with MS-DOS 5.0. But I'm using 4.0, 4.01 actually. Uh, why? Well, it just happens to be the, the version of DOS I own. Um, the Commodore does come with 2.11, and on the floppy disk, it states that that's what the driver is made for. So I decided I would boot from the system floppy, and I'm, you know, I've omitted the whole install process for you again, but <clears throat> I did install it to a copy of my original system floppy. And this was the result. It's getting much further. In fact, notice there that it's, the, it's recognized in the 287 processor in fact with 211 it was extremely consistent uh, I would boot off that floppy almost every single time <clears throat> but I want to use my hard disk drive or my XT to IDE drive and to support the large hard drives the I had to go to DOS 3.3 um, version 4.0 was the first to support large hard drives, but 3.3 can support up to 32 megabytes. So I've repartitioned my S, uh, SD card and loaded it up. However, with 3.3, it's glitchy. Very glitchy. Um, notice it's working here but it doesn't state that I have the coprocessor installed. So I noticed that if I gave it some time, so not boot right in and start the turbo right away, but start it after, 
it does load the necessary drivers, but it was so inconsistent. Okay, well, it's been super glitchy, but I wanted to at least run some uh, some speed tests. Uh, when it is operating, it seems to stay operating. So, the first test is just the standard uh, check it. And under configuration, one thing I notice if you look at the interrupts here, notice COM3 is available, or sorry, IRQ3 is available. Uh, which is what the card is on at the moment. Strange. But under the benchmarks, you can see it sees it as it. 286 CPU running at 7.78 megahertz. It also sees the 287 coprocessor. <coughs> and considerably higher rates, which is excellent. So we do have a functioning card here. What's I gonna check? So under configuration, there is the 286 XT machine with 8287 math coprocessor. So there you go. All right. Well, let's run some uh, actual tests on this thing. First thing here is C Show. If you're aware, it's a DOS program used to view all different sorts of. Uh, picture types. It supports the video card that is comes with these PC-10s. It's a bit of a rare bird. It displays, it does have like a 16 color mode on it, similar to EGA, but it's not EGA, it's a Plantronics. Um, a bit of a rare thing, not much software is available for it. Uh, however, this C show does support it. So I'm able to view JPEG files, all sorts of different video formats. And running on a stock machine, I've had to speed this up because of how long it takes to render the photo. Approximately two minutes to do this photo. It's not even a full screen photo of Jabba the Hutt. Uh, sped up at four times, so that was over two minutes to render that. Now, with the turbo PC turbo enabled, I'm going to do this in real time, I believe. That's crazy fast. I mean, the CPU says it runs, you know, twice as fast, almost 8 megahertz. But this is coming in probably four times the speed. I wonder if the math processor is being used in this case. Boom. 30 seconds. Considerably faster. All right, for my second test, uh, Leisure Suit Larry 1. Now, what this is, this is a re-released with better graphics. It was meant for uh, VGA computers, but they released an EGA version of it. And some genius out there converted a lot of the Sierra games, uh, not converted them, but included a Plantronics driver recently over the last number of years uh, to support the Plantronics driver in um, these Commodore machines. So you get the EGA experience. Now, as you can see, I've had to speed up the loading here um, because it was taking literally a few minutes, and here we go.
It's painfully slow, I don't know if you're aware. It's loading the different screens here. Transit to save your pain a little bit, I've transitioned a little further ahead with the questions here. This is it trying to load the game. I mean, I'm probably at <laughs> almost five minutes since I've been able to get into the game. Okay, so we're in now. And Larry is barely moving here. This is unplayable. All right, let's try with the turbo enabled. And this is real time. It's booting up almost instantly here. So much faster. I have to cut these sections out of the stock because it took too long. This is all real time, right in. And as you can see, Larry moves fairly well. He's actually totally playable, but he's glitching. His graphic or sprite or whatever he is in this game, you can see he's got a bit of a, like that tearing happening. It is still slow though. I have, to, I have to say, it is still slow, but playable. Yeah, still a bit slow. Like, this guy should be running fairly fast out. But not too bad. Okay, next test. Uh, police quest. Uh, one thing I should mention with the mouse, because I don't know if you noticed, Larry, I couldn't get into the bar there because I didn't have a mouse attached. I attached a mouse for uh, police quest. And <clears throat> this is stock, again, running slow. Uh, mouse is working. There's a reason why. I've got the mouse here to you'll see in a second. Again, these games are quite slow. Again, this is another Sierra game that a driver was created for the Plantronics uh, video card. So it supports the 16 color mode. Once again, we got to speed things up here because it is painfully slow just to get the game started on the stock machine. All right, so slow on the stock machine. How about PC turbo mode? Notice my mouse doesn't work. And it didn't matter if I loaded my mouse driver on the host machine or with the turbo running. It does not support the mouse. But again, the speed difference here is unbelievable. Now, even though the mouse driver is loaded, nothing happens. It does not re respond at all.
So I'm not sure what's going on with the mouse, but when I looked at the manual here, I noticed, um, where is it? Standard Turbo does not run AT specific software such as Unix and other programs that use ATIO hardware. So one thing that was not mentioned earlier is that this is actually not so much an accelerator card as it is a completely separate computer. When you load the drivers, it actually puts your computer into a, a different mode. And I don't know if you noticed, but it actually has to reboot DOS um, when it starts up. So you're actually running completely off of it. So any hardware that's running directly on the host system is, is sort of independent. And my guess is that it just simply doesn't have access to uh, things like the, the, the mouse. Um, there is stuff in there about serial printers and access to parallel printers, but uh, I'm assuming that the mouse driver is just not transferable through to the, the 286. The last thing I want to show you here is just that I added a heat sink to the coprocessor because uh, this thing was getting so hot to touch even. Um, and I read online that other people had done, done things like that. So, um, yeah, so that about wraps it up for this install uh, and test of the PC Turbo 286E accelerator card for XT machines on a Commodore. Thanks for watching.